Hey beauties, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm sharing a perfume haul of some of my favorite new discoveries and then I have two perfumes that I haven't tried yet, including the new Kayali Invite Only. She just arrived maybe an hour ago. And I know you guys have been excited about that one as well, so I'm going to unbox on camera, share my first impressions, but first, I wanna get into some of these new favorites because when I tried them in store or tried the sample, they were so good that I deemed them full bottle worthy and I had to purchase for myself. And that's really saying something. I'm going to begin with this mini Lilabo haul. I finally had a chance to go to one of the counters and really spend some time there. I have visited Lilabo counters in the past, but it was always a really quick, quick trip, just stopping by. I've received a couple samples just within other purchases but I really have not done a deep dive into the brand so a couple weeks ago I stopped by the new Lilabo counter that is now in my local Nordstrom which is exciting and I was sniffing around and I discovered so many fragrances that were really nice and a couple of these I went to see specifically because of your recommendations so I ended up picking up two little bottles this is another 13 and the Noir 29. This was such a huge standout. Now, I know I've said it before, and this is really obvious, something that we're all dealing with. It's kind of strange discovering fragrances in store when you have the mask on. There's something about it that just makes it a little bit more difficult. That being said, I still really love both of these fragrances, but when I did come home, I smelled them again. I sprayed them on my skin and they just smelled a little bit different from what I had remembered in the store. And I think that's just one of those phenomenon we're gonna have to deal with for a while. Lilabo is just such a cool brand. I love their aesthetic, their packaging. I like how they create the little labels for you. So it says, labeled in Nordstrom by Leo on 81021 for Erin Nicole, which is pretty cool. So they ask you to spell out your name. I think that's a really cool gift idea if you're gifting it to somebody. You could probably then change the date if it's maybe to mark a special occasion or anniversary, something like that. So I think this is really special. We actually have the Palo Santo candle out in our living room. It smells incredible. Even when it's not lit, it just scents the entire space. But another 13 has been on my radar. For one thing, it's been recommended to me so many times. But also, just on a personal note, 13 is my lucky number. So I was born on July 13th. My husband is born on September 13th. We met in 2013 <laughs> and we, there's a restaurant in new orleans called 13 and so 13 has just always been sort of a special number and usually it's seen as sort of unlucky but the fact that my husband and i both share it as a birthday it's a very special it's a happy lucky number to us so i kind of had it in the back of my mind that i was going to love this fragrance even before i tried it myself and i do really love it Inside the box is a little thank you card and I opted to get the smaller bottle because it was my first time with the fragrance and I wanted to get more than one. And also I just have such a huge collection. This was actually the better buy. Of course, getting the larger bottle is also always the best value. But for me, this is actually a better value because I have a higher chance of actually using it up. Another 13 was created in collaboration with another magazine in 2010. Notes include ambroxan, jasmine petals, musk, moss, and woody ambry notes. I'm gonna use the blotter since we have six fragrances to try today. I wanna save my hands and my arms for the two that I haven't tried yet. I know I love this one. And it is so good. Just really pretty. It instantly reminds me of a couple of the hotel lobbies down on South Beach, some of my favorite hotels, like the One Hotel. There's this very specific scent when you walk in, and something he had mentioned is that they work on the fragrances for a couple of the big hotels. So I think it was maybe the Santal, and it could be another 13 that they actually used to scent the lobby. It's beautiful. It's a little bit woody, but it's very romantic and just beautiful. It smells so natural. Like all of the notes came straight from nature. Just a beautiful, light, I think daytime appropriate fragrance could be a signature scent. And I think it's pretty seasonless as well. I could definitely see somebody wearing this over the summer, but I could also see somebody wearing this fall winter. It's hard to describe. It's a little bit woody, a little bit fresh, 
not overly masculine, but not really feminine either. I would definitely use this as a candle or to scent a room. I almost get like a sea salt and lime. There's something about it that reminds me of the beach. It's very calming, very relaxing. It's very elegant, but incredibly understated. I don't think it's one of those fragrances that is really going to turn heads. You don't smell this and think, wow, oh my gosh, I want to bathe in this fragrance, but it just smells so good. I can see why people just connect to this perfume and they just adopt it as theirs. It's kind of what happened when I was in store. I smelled them all and I thought, ooh, that's good, ooh, that's good. But when I smelled this, it was like, yes. And I instantly connected to the hotel and memories and it just made me feel very calm. I haven't had this a long time, but I did come home and I sprayed it on my arm. So in my very limited experience wearing the fragrance, it sits a bit closer to the skin. It wears a little bit lighter, which I don't mind. I think it's one of those fragrances that isn't going to speak loudly, but you just know you smell really good. I think it is office appropriate. It's daytime appropriate. It's never really offensive or not appropriate. You could wear this fragrance anywhere, anytime. I think it's maybe a bit simple, but there's something incredibly special about this fragrance. I completely understand the hype, why people have been recommending this, and why it is one of their most popular fragrances, because it really is just pleasant. You smell it and it's like, ah, yes, this is what I want to smell like. This is what I want to smell, period. <laughs> I want everybody to wear this fragrance. It's really good. The second fragrance I picked out when I was at the counter from Lulabo is the Noir 29. I haven't heard much about this fragrance. If it has been recommended to me, it was maybe a long time ago and it just really hasn't been on my radar. There were several that were so beautiful that really stood out. I was doing my best to try to smell even with the mask on so I could pick out a couple favorites. This one blew me away. Now, it was the fragrance that when I came home and smelled it later on my arm, I thought, huh. It's not quite what I expected. It's not really what I thought it was in store, but I still really like it and I think it is incredibly unique. I'm certainly not duplicating anything in my collection because if you've ever smelled this, you know that it is intense and woody and incense-y and kind of smells exotic, unlike most fragrances. The Noir 29 is an ode to the noble tea leaf and the craft that surrounds it. So key notes include bergamot, bay leaves, black tea, fig, hay, tobacco, cedarwood, vetiver, and musk. Now this fragrance has a lot of strength and longevity, almost the opposite to another 13. I had read a lot of people said as much as they love the fragrance, it kind of disappears on them after maybe 30 minutes, an hour, and then they can't really smell it anymore. Well, the Noir 29, this definitely lingers and I can smell it on my skin. Oh, it's so good. I love it. Not a safe blind buy. Not something that is going to speak to everybody. But there is something so spicy and it's a little bit sweet, but it's very woody. Mmm the kind of fragrance that is going to transport you to maybe like an antique furniture factory, maybe a grandparent's house. If this fragrance really speaks to you, it's probably because of past travels or past experiences, some sort of memory, because it smells so specific. It's a spice bomb for sure. It's so spicy, so woody. When I smelled it in store, it had a little bit of sweetness that, as much as I do detect a little sweetness initially, it was almost maybe like berry notes or vanilla. There was something else going on that really drew me to it that I don't get now. It was probably just a combination of everything I was smelling that day. But I think when I will spray this, I will most likely layer it with something else. Usually I'm not really thrilled to have to layer a fragrance and it's not that I feel like I have to layer it, but I think I would want to. And it kind of excites me like, ooh, what kind of combination can I come up with? When I was in store, Leo kept saying exotic. It's very exotic. And I think that keyword is what rang in my brain. I thought, yeah, it is very exotic. And I do get the tea and the fig. I really like fig. 
Smells like a very strong cup of black tea with a hint of fig and maybe a little cedar in there. There's definitely a woody component. If you like a fragrance that is very different, if you like spicy black tea, if you like woody notes, if you don't mind something that isn't overly sweet and floral, check it out. You might be surprised. Now, while I was there, we were also talking about the Vanille 44, which is one of the limited city exclusive fragrances. So I believe it's carried in Paris all the time, but they're going to send it out in September to all of the boutiques. And we're lucky that we have two boutiques here in Miami. There's one in Wynwood. There's also one in Ball Harbor. And so they are going to carry. I called them yesterday and they confirmed they currently have little sample sizes for sale. And I actually ordered one online. It just shipped for $12 for the sample. I probably should have just driven down to the store. Anything to avoid Miami traffic. So I'm waiting for the sample to arrive, but I've heard so many incredible things about the vanilla fragrance, the Vini 44. It's very hard to get your hands on because it's only out in the other boutiques besides Paris for the month of September. So if that's something that interests you, maybe call around, try to get your hands on a sample or restock your bottle. I have a friend of mine who always talks about that perfume and she says, you have to smell it, it's amazing. Next, I'm going to unbox this Mice and Sir fragrance that I discovered in the little discovery set, which I had purchased from Bloomingdale's a couple weeks ago. I think I mentioned it in maybe a get ready with me video. There were four fragrances in the little set, and two of them I really loved, but this one was a surefire standout, and I knew I had to have it. And I saw Bloomingdale's ran one of their special loyalist deals where they offer like 20% off, 25% off. I think that's if you have the card, but even if you don't have a store card and you're just a loyalist based on your phone number, you can earn double the points, triple the points. I think it was maybe five times the points. So I thought this is the perfect time. And I ended up getting, I think a $50 rewards card that I can put towards a future purchase. Bloomingdale's has never paid me a dime. They don't sponsor me, but I just never used to shop at Bloomingdale's and recently I started and now I've discovered that they have incredible sales, great designer sales, and just a great loyalty program. So just throwing that out there for you guys. And also I've made a return with them and it was very easy. I shipped it back. I didn't even drive to the store because I didn't want to drive all the way to Aventura. So For Your Love was the other sample in the set that I really liked. And I think at some point down the road, I will probably end up adding that one to my collection as well. But Trey Share, this was the one that just blew me away. It was love at first sniff and I had to wear it on my arm for a couple days that's one of the great things about the discovery set kind of takes away any risk about purchasing the full-size bottle because I did think to myself this smells really good but is it going to give me a headache later on and it didn't this brand has been highly requested and recommended from you guys so I knew I had to pick up at least the discovery set I definitely had high expectations I would have preferred to purchase a 1.7, maybe a one ounce bottle. All I could find was the 3.4 fluid ounce, but I love it so much. I went ahead and purchased. So it has keynotes of orange tree blossom extract, ambrox, jasmine sandback, bourbon vanilla absolute, musk, and Australian sandalwood essential oil. I found a couple translations for Trey Share online, including dearest, very dear, darling, beloved, and very expensive which I think all do a really nice job describing the fragrance because it smells very expensive. I just love this bottle. They always look so beautiful when they're fresh out of the box, no fingerprints all over the place. Really nice mist. Oh, yum. Smooth vanilla, amber deliciousness. I don't know if this would be categorized as a true gourmand, but I think this could have made my best gourmands video. But I think it, it's even a bit powdery, but in the best way possible. I don't typically love a powdery fragrance, but this is powdery, but still very modern. I'm trying to think of what it reminds me of. It is a little bit reminiscent of other fragrances, but it is, the, it is truly warm, cozy, perfect for fall, winter. Mm. This is like being wrapped up in a warm blanket, just 
a hug from a loved one. You know, they describe it as a love letter to somebody who might never receive it. But really that that feeling, that serotonin that you get from hugging a loved one, that is what you get when you smell this perfume. This to me is luxury in a bottle. It's so beautiful. It's mind-blowingly beautiful and yet it feels a bit understated, like a bit reserved. Maybe understated isn't even the right word. It's a bit conservative. Not flashy, not overly sexy, not overt, but I feel like this is the type of fragrance that you would wear to an elegant occasion. Like you are all dressed up like a state dinner, something really fancy when you have to impress a lot of people because we all know, you know, we have plenty of those on our calendar, but truly maybe a holiday party, something where you want to feel like you're on the red carpet of the Golden Globes, Oscars. It's not even Golden Globe worthy, Oscar worthy. This would be the fragrance. This next fragrance is the big splurge for this perfume haul. If you watched my last haul, it was the Blind Buy haul, you know that I did not have the best experience, unfortunately, with the new Dior Vanilla Diorama fragrance. And I did hear from some of you guys who really liked it, so I'm very glad to hear that you've enjoyed the fragrance. I was so disappointed, and it's just too much money to spend on something that I knew would just sit and rot, and I didn't even feel like it was something that I would layer. So I decided instead of swapping it out for something else Dior, I would go ahead and knock off one of my wish list items. So I ended up spending even more money to get this fragrance, but it was worth it because this is something that I've wanted for a really long time. It is from Tiziana Terenzi and it's one of her more elevated price points. Unfortunately, they're all elevated. It's Haley. Haley? Haley? I believe it's Haley. I think it's named after Haley's Comet, actually. This fragrance is so special. Another state dinner type of fragrance. I'm gonna go ahead and unbox it. Oh, wow. Oh my gosh. I did not know it came in a red velvet box. Wow. So Cassiopeia is one of my favorite fragrances, also comes from the Luna collection. I think it did come with a nice box, but I must have thrown it away. I think it, the box was really pretty, but nothing like this. This is something that I will definitely hold on to. Wow, this is beautiful. Haley launched in 2019, so it's still pretty new. Top notes are passion fruit, cassis, rose, and lemon. Middle notes are peach, raspberry, floral notes, green notes, and cinnamon. Base notes are musk, vanilla, woody notes, and amber. Everything about that composition sounds exactly like the type of fragrance I love. The red velvet box is incredibly elegant. The bottle is beautiful. The Cassiopeia is almost all cap. <laughs> you know, the cap is the same size as the bottle, whereas this, has a little smaller cap, so I actually prefer this bottle. Everything about it, the design is amazing, and this cap is so heavy. It's definitely weighted. It feels like if you drop this on your foot, you could really cause some damage. So it's luxury, details, everything. Oh, okay, <laughs> enough talking about it, let's spray. Oh, yes. Mmm. It's fruity, it's a little bit sweet, but it's just elegance, pure class. This smells like a grown woman's fragrance. This is really the type of fragrance that you wear somewhere special. Amazing. Kind of reminds me of a less sweet elixir from Roja. I visited several Tiziana Terenzi counters and every time I go and I talk to somebody new behind the counter, I always ask them, what is your favorite perfume? Every single time, they always point to this one. They might have like a secondary favorite that changes, but they all, everybody always points this out. Now, maybe that's because the price point is really high and they would just want to sell me something really expensive, but I, I don't think that's the case because the fragrance really is amazing. I think this is just 
a standout perfume, even among a beautiful niche fragrance brand that carries a ton of great perfumes, Haley is a standout. Now that really says something. It's a little bit fruity, but not too fruity. And it's a little bit floral, but not too floral. It's just perfectly balanced and just dreamy and beautiful. I love rose, I love peach, raspberry, the cassis, everything about this. The vanilla, it's very smooth in the dry down, just like Trey Cher. I feel like this would be your power fragrance. It could be a signature scent, but I feel like this is kind of a CEO woman, somebody who has a ton of influence and power, and she just walks into the room and everything stops. That's kind of the mood. Could also be a special occasion, could also be a date night, but I, I kind of think this is the type of fragrance that sort of transcends season, occasion. You know, there are those perfumes that they are just so, wow, that is amazing, that you can't really put them, you can't put it in a box. I couldn't, this isn't just daytime, it's not only date night, it's anytime you want to wear it. It just, this is a fragrance for somebody who has taste, impeccable taste, stylish head to toe. While they smell completely different, I see both of these fragrances fitting in nicely to the same collection. Like I think if you really like Trey Cher, chances are high you will also really like Hailey and vice versa. But I think Trey Cher is a little bit more sensual, there's a warmth to it. I think this definitely leans more fall winter could be daytime could be date night as well but there's a sensuality to this whereas with Haley, i think this is more of a feminine confidence just kind of a bold wow you're gonna smell amazing kind of head turner fragrance both head turners but in a different way they give off a totally different mood although they are both incredibly feminine and just very special I have two more perfumes left to unbox, so it is the moment of truth. This is the Kaoli Invite Only Amber 23. And then here I have the Ellis Brooklyn Super Amber. This is brand new. This is the only perfume that was sent to me complimentary. I purchased everything else myself. This one is a blind buy though. The other ones, I knew they smelled really good, so I'm a little bit anxious. I think it's going to be amazing, but I was slightly disappointed by the Coco Vanilla, which was my first fragrance from the brand. And you guys have since let me know that that shouldn't have been my first purchase, that there are plenty of other better fragrances that I need to explore. So that's what I'm planning to do at some point soon. Ooh, the notes are on the back. It says black cherry, honey, tobacco leaf, amber resin, and vanilla Madagascar. Amber 23, invite only. Let's do it. Oh, wow. Mmm. It is very strong, very spicy. It smells like Ocean from Parfum de Marly, which I love. And I mentioned that as one of my favorite gourmands. The initial spray is almost identical to Ojan, which is not a bad thing because I really like that fragrance. It's very delicious. It's very bold. I get Ojan a little bit angel share, but maybe not quite as smooth. I think I like it more than the vanilla cocoa. The two are completely different, but in terms of initial experience, first impression, I think this fragrance has more of a wow factor. And it doesn't have that really artificial quality that I was picking up in the first one. The vanilla cocoa struck me as a little bit cheap or there was just something a little bit inexpensive about it, whereas this smells high quality, it smells expensive, it smells luxurious. But I need to give it a minute, I'm gonna let it dry down, but wow, I'm just, I think I'm in a little bit of shock, I don't know what my face is going to look like on camera, but I'm sort of, in my mind, I'm trying to think of everything it smells like and how I would describe it to you guys, and truly I'm a little bit shocked that it smells so much like something I know. Ocean. 
plain and simple. If you like that, you're gonna love this because they smell the same. Obviously, they're not the same, but they smell very similar. It smells a little bit boozy, sort of similar to that vanilla diorama, but it's not quite as harsh, which is a good thing. Getting a little afternoon storm. Doesn't sound like the rain is gonna let up anytime soon, so I'm just gonna keep filming. Hopefully it's not that loud. It sounds really loud in here, but the camera probably isn't picking it up. So now I'm gonna go ahead and unbox this brand new Super Amber from Ellis Brooklyn. This just launched and I actually have a call tomorrow with the founder of the brand and she's gonna talk a little bit more about the fragrance. So part of me wanted to wait until after the class, but I'm just curious and I wanna go ahead and share my first impressions. The notes aren't listed on the website, but it says that Super Amber is a cozy, super warm, addictive fragrance that envelops like a cashmere blanket on warm, bare skin. Oh my gosh. I can't smell anything. I must have accidentally touched my nose to my arm over here and I can still smell the Noir 29 so strong from Lalabo. That was one of the first fragrances I smelled. That is almost all I can pick up. I can't smell my arm at all. Let me try a blotter card. That is so weird. Not even a hint of fragrance. Unless it is just that light. I don't think it's supposed to be quite that light. Nothing. I, can, I can't smell anything. Wow. That is so weird. I, something must be wrong. It's either my nose has smelled way too many strong fragrances. Okay, I feel like I'm starting to pick up a little something on my arm and it's nice, it's pleasant, but it's just so light compared to this. It's very difficult. This is one that I definitely need to revisit tomorrow when I'm fresh. I haven't smelled six other fragrances, five other fragrances. So I'm going to hold off judgment. I'll pin a comment to the top of this video and I'll let you know what I think. I'm going to try this again tomorrow. I don't think it's bad. I think it's just my nose and the room. There's just a lot going on. So it's maybe not the best time to judge. I did feel like the other Ellis Brooklyn fragrances I've tried have been very light as well. The invite only on the other hand is very bold. It's very bold, it's very spicy. Kind of smells like liqueur, very amber, warm, sexy, a moody fragrance for sure. This is going to be fall, winter, date night, not a daytime fragrance. And it reminds me a bit of Amber Nui from Dior as well. So I would say Ojan from Parfum de Marly, Amber Nui from Dior. It's almost as if they had a baby, like they mixed. Also kind of reminds me a bit of the vanilla Diorama, but not quite as harsh. I get a lot of cinnamon, like cinnamon bark, not cinnamon sugar, like a real spicy cinnamon, like a, almost like a roasted, toasted cinnamon, something that's just really intense. Cinnamon and honey are the two notes that really speak to me or really stand out at this point. And it's had a, some time to dry down. I think it's just going to keep drying down. It's going to keep getting a little bit softer, maybe a little bit warmer. I'll also continue to update you guys on this fragrance as well. Of the two Kaoli fragrances I own now, this one is my favorite. It's very Christmassy, very holiday. I think it's really nice. That completes today's perfume haul. I know most of the fragrances mentioned today are pretty pricey and I have heard your requests to integrate more affordable fragrance videos. So in the future, I'm going to do my best to split them up. I'll do some niche fragrance lists, maybe some more affordable lists, designer lists. Any other requests you have for me, let me know down in the comment section. I am constantly 
trying to come up with different ideas for fragrance videos, but of course the main thing is that they are helpful to you guys. So if you have anything that you would like me to cover, let me know, but I will definitely work on including more affordable videos in the future. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, give it a thumbs up, leave me your comments, questions down below. As always, I will be linking everything mentioned. Everything on my face will be down below in the description box for your convenience. And for more videos like this, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell.